The Cavaliers complete the sweep. It's on to the Eastern Conference Finals for the fourth straight year. Another lopsided showing against the Raptors. So today is not a good day for the Toronto Raptors. What happens is, is that if you're LeBron James and you're coming at certain dudes, particularly that team, what happens is they shrink beneath it all. They can't take it. They all of a sudden get tight. And the things that they normally do with fluidity, with cohesiveness and beyond, suddenly they can't do it because they're going up against him. Ernie, remember what I said? I said I would never say a team has to win a game one, but the Toronto Raptors had to win game one. They were still shell-shocked in game two because they got beat down in game two. And then they tried to show some pride in game three, and then they quit again tonight. And you get a team in the Raptors who quit. That's what it adds up to. Listen. LeBron plus one all-star mm. you know, versus a team that did mm. not show mental toughness. You know, DeMar DeRozan played horrible defense tonight, him and Kyle Lowry both. At least Kyle played with heart and was solid for a lot of the series, but can't really say the same for DeRozan. But I told you this, yeah. that Toronto wasn't hey, where you know I told hey, you I'm man enough to admit, I said, this is not the You said, this is the same old rep. I said, no, it's not. They're new and improved. Uh, I, but you know what? Hey, you got to be man enough to admit when you're wrong. And I was 100% wrong on the Raptors. I mean, we didn't know it. We could, we didn't know it. Dominating performance from LeBron James has people going wild on social media. Michael is here, Michael Serapio. Social media, you're seeing people reacting to, as you say, the dominant uh, performance last night. Take a look at this, uh, Heather. And if you wondered what happened to the dinosaurs the first time around, uh, oh, when you talk about LeBron owning Toronto, well, the Toronto sign in front of City Hall, but don't worry, this is not real, Heather. Spitting image of last year there, Raptor fans. Against the Raptors. The fuck is that good at Big Yeah. Fuck the matter. Did you see Drake leave the game in the third quarter? The Cavs turned rapper Drake into the Degrassi Drake. I mean, did you see their stadium in the fourth quarter? It looked like someone dispersed tear gas. Essentially, tear gas and watching the Raptors both make your eyes cry. Get him out of here! Toronto Raptors, you're done. This core group has been together for a few years now. They cannot get it done when it matters most. Is it time to blow this team up? Yes, it is. It's time to blow the team up, and I think Masai Ushiri, he knows this. But at the end of the day, I'm a basketball guy, and I want to put a product out there uh, that's going to compete one day for a championship and uh, sometimes it's going to be tough, sometimes it's going to be hard, uh, but uh, overall guys, I, I, I think uh, we're in a good place. I don't care what people say about Toronto, Canada, all that stuff. It's a beautiful place here. It's a be beautiful, they have beautiful fans, they have great fans here. And, and so it's left to us to do our job. Uh, it's going to take patience, it's going to take will. Uh, we're going to instill a uh, passion, a passion to win. Guys, the overall goal in the NBA is to win a championship. That has to be the overall goal. It's not playoffs, it's not, it, it's to win a championship at the end. I reminisce for a spell, or shall I say think back yeah. 22 years ago to keep it on track uh -huh. The birth of a child on the 8th of October uh -huh. A toast with my granddad
daddy came sober Count all the fingers and the toes Now I suppose you hope the little black boy grows yeah. 18 years younger than my mama But I really got beatings cause the girl loved drama In single parenthood there I stood By the time she was 21 had another one This one's a girl, let's name her Pam Same father as the first but you don't give a damn Irresponsible, plain not thinking Papa said chill but the brother keep winking Still he rolls down you would tear out your hide On your side while the baby make a slide But mama got wise to the game The youngest of five kids, hun, here it is After 10 years without no spirit yeah. Mama's getting married in the house Word. Listen, positive over negative For the woman a master uh -huh. Mother Queen's rise in the chapter yeah. Deja vu, tell you what I'm gonna do When they reminisce over you, my God I recall a man off the family tree My right hand Papa Doc I see Whoa. Took me from a boy to a man So I always had a father When my biological didn't bother yeah. Taking care of this So who am I to pick up? Yeah. Not a bad ticker But I'm clocking Pop's liver yeah. But you can never say that as life is through uh -huh. Five kids at 21 Believe he got a right to right. Here we go while I check the scene With the Portuguese lover at the age of 14 The same age, front page, no fuss But I bet you all you know They live longer than us right. Never been seen now That's where you're wrong uh -huh. But give the man a taste and he's gone Not no sleep to a jazz tune I can hear his head banging on the wall in the next room I get the pillow and hope I don't wake him For this man to cuss, hear it all in verbatim uh -huh. Telling me how to raise my boy unless he's taking over I said, Pop, maybe when you're older We laughed all night about the hookers at the party My old man standing yelling, good God almighty Use your condom, take sips of the brew When they reminisce over you, for real I reminisce so you never forget this The days are way back so many bear witness the fitness yeah. Take the first letter out of each word in this joint Listen close as I prove my point T to the R O Y how did you and I meet In front of big loose fighting in the street But only you saw what took many time to see I dedicate this to you for believing in me Rain or shine, yes in any weather My grandma Pam holds the family together My uncle Doc's the greatest, better get the latest If we're talking about a car, Uncle Sterling got the latest I try to be live cause I got no choice And run my own business like my Aunt Joyce So keep rock hit me, no respect to When they reminisce over you Listen, listen, just listen To the funky song respect and much respect to these fans to this country this is unbelievable i've never been a part of something like this in my 13 year career i can't pull the cultural reset off this year can i <laughs> I look. I have to look at a body of work. As a leader, I have to look at the body of work that has been done over the last five years and think what's the last five years and what's the next five years ahead. And that's what I have to do. That's what I'm going to do. Yes, there are weaknesses and yes, there are strengths. The Toronto Raptors have fired head coach Dwayne Casey. He coached the Raptors for seven seasons and led the team to five straight playoff appearances. Two straight sweep, sweeps at the hands of the Cavs. 
and not just that they lost to the Cavs this year, but in the manner with which they lost. See, my instant reaction is that it's BS. I don't think he deserved it because he lost to the best player in the world. Now, it doesn't help that he got swept. Yesterday, been a very awkward moment. I told you. You, you, this is the moment you was waiting for. I wanted for, this to happen. Dwayne Casey, who is now the head coach of the Detroit Pistons, was named the NBA's Coach of the Year for coaching the Toronto Raptors. You know, when you get fired, which I did recently, I don't know if you knew that or not, after winning Coach of the Year. In some ways, I think the time has come, you know, like sometimes, you know, like these things come to an end, uh, uh, relationships come to an end, and we'll figure out a way to move on, new voice, um, uh, just new everything. The Toronto Raptors have found their man, promoting assistant Nick Nurse to become the franchise's next head coach, according to ESPN. The coaching journey of former UNI Panther Nick Nurse has spanned 26 years on the bench. It started as a student assistant on the 1989-90 men's basketball team led by Eldon Miller. This summer, he became a head coach in the NBA for the Toronto Raptors after serving five years as an assistant. Right, we've, we've got to be trying to think of what's coming next before it comes next if you want to stay ahead of the game. And, and you know, tried to bring some of that. Uh, I've tried to make steps in my career to continually learn. His moves through Europe and the G League were always about finding something new he could apply to his basketball principles. Probably my favorite one as a coach was when we won the, the D League championship at Iowa. That was such a unique situation of uh, they kind of they kind of started that team and they said to me they said you do the basketball we don't do you you pick the players do the trades do the draft just don't bother us we got a business to run here you you do this so it was me and another guy and we spent literally it wasn't 24 hours a day but it felt like 24 hours a day side by side finally after four years won the thing and. And I just remember kind of it was at home and the place was going crazy and everybody, you know, the clock was ticking down and I kind of sat there and tapped him and said, let's let the clock tick down a little further, but this is really cool. You know, we did, we, we did it, you know, after all this hard work. So that's, that's probably the biggest one so far. Coach Nurse is pretty cool, calm and collective, isn't he? And I think there's performance pressure on the athletes, but there's absolutely performance pressure on the coaches. If you fire the coach of the year in the NBA and Dwayne Casey, a man highly respected with an NBA championship pedigree in Dallas, you better get out of the gate strong. Big day for the Toronto Raptors. Simi, they have a new head coach. Mm -hmm. Joining us now is Masai Ujiri. Masai, forgive me for the following question. I feel like I do have to ask it, however. Not long after the sweep, and I'm sure you're aware of some of this, there was a lot of speculation as to what this roster might look like by opening night next season. And Adrian Wojnarowski, some other guys in the media have said that there is no one off the table for you as this offseason progresses. When you hear that, what's your initial reaction? Uh, you know, the, the NBA is, uh, is, is a crazy world, you know, like uh, and you never say never with anything to, to me in this, uh, in this league. From niggas I lost in the past. There's boys and plays in these foul days. Housing cops in these foul ways. I'm walking through a wild maze. Holding my brain, trying to maintain. Flea hell, snow will rain. I guess the game will never change. Kawhi Leonard is known for a lot of amazing things. But I think what he's known for most is not being known. Nobody ever knows what he's thinking. He doesn't really talk that much. Many fans are not aware of the challenges he has faced to get to where he is today. To truly understand Kawhi Leonard, we must first understand where he came from. Born in Riverside, California on January 29, 1991, to divorced parents Mark Leonard and Kim Robertson. Mark Leonard was not just his dad, but also his best friend and role model. 
Since the time the two spent together was limited due to his parents' divorce, the duo would spend most of Leonard's childhood at his father's popular car wash located in Compton. On Friday, January 18, 2008, just 24 hours before an upcoming game, his father was shot to death. With his father's death in mind, Kawhi Leonard knew he had to push forward. In the midst of the tragedy, Leonard turned to basketball as his distraction and mission. And six years later, after the tragic event, Kawhi Leonard won the NBA Finals and the Finals MVP. This is why that NBA Finals win was so special to his family. The Spurs closed out the Heat in Game 5 on June 15, 2014 which was Father's Day. This is just a perfect example of not judging a book by its cover. Just because somebody is quiet and laid back, you might look at them and think they're weird, crazy, whatever, but you don't know what just happened in their life. You don't know what they're currently going through or what they've been through. Overall, as silent and discreet as he is off the NBA floor, Kawhi Leonard is thought of as one of the most mysterious and unemotional players in the whole league. Jalen, what's going on here? I hate to say this into a microphone, but I'm on a television show that people actually watch. So I want to say this. <sighs> I hate to say this. Kawhi Leonard wants out of San Antonio is what I'm hearing. Kawhi Leonard has missed all but nine games this season because of right quadriceps tendinopathy. This entire season has created a lot of tension uh, between the organization and Kawhi Leonard and, and his camp. This has been as out of a situation as the Spurs have faced. The way his injury situation was handled. Was he misdiagnosed? League sources telling Adrian Wojnarowski that Kawhi would like to come back to his native Los Angeles. There's been some chatter. Maybe the Raptors could get involved in the Kawhi waiting for the wild card team. ESPN here. We've been talking about it on podcasts. Las Vegas now has even odds of Kawhi Leonard staying with the San Antonio Spurs or joining the Toronto. Raptors. I find this curious. I don't really see this happening. So look what has happened now. DeMar DeRozan has deleted all of the photos from his Instagram page. There's no way I'm giving up DeRozan, Anunoby, Pirtle, any of those guys with no assurances that Kawhi is going to stay with me beyond the year that I have him. They're the proverbial team that what did what they could do what Oklahoma City did last year with Paul George, which is just say, you know what? This makes sense for us to just gamble and take the risk. Let's do it. The day after baseball's all-star game, traditionally, yeah. one of the quietest on the sports calendar. Today, not so much. Not so much. A 4 a.m. flurry of activity in the newsroom. That's what we had. Let's get right to the breaking news. And for that, we bring in our NBA insider, Adrian Ward Janowski. Woj, tell us what you know about Kawhi Leonard at this hour. David, Toronto is finalizing an, a, a deal with San Antonio to acquire Kawhi Leonard, DeMar DeRozan, and more would go from Toronto to the Spurs. Well, I, I was told that Kawhi Leonard really has no desire to play in Toronto. You know, his preferences, that was to play for one of the teams in Los Angeles. Kawhi's not going to be happy because he may be going to Toronto, which I believe is the exact opposite of Los Angeles. Yeah. My initial reaction was Toronto won because even though they only get Kawhi Leonard for a year. Maybe. Even though, the, maybe. No, he's going to well, the you just uh, Yeah, I haven't heard. Yeah, he didn't express a, um, uh, a lack of interest to not play in Canada to me. I think the Spurs are going home high-fiving, Ryan. Oh, I can't. I did think, it again. I, I think they can't believe they got this deal. Oh, we've been doing this for how many years? You know, you can't continue doing the same thing over and over again. And when you get a chance to get um, a, a top five player, which it doesn't come very often, um, you have to, I think you have to jump on it. And I have a mandate to win. Uh, and that's what I want to do is to win, uh, to win a championship, put Toronto Raptors uh, in a position to win. But uh, I, I really do acknowledge there's no measurement for what uh, DeMar DeRozan uh, has done for this organization. The Toronto Raptors select Dumar DeRozan. The kid from Compton, the tough part of Los Angeles, quickly became a fan favorite on and off the court. From hospitals to classrooms, important for him to be part of the community. Hold your books up high, high, high. 
especially this literacy program that DeRozan sought out to be part of. When he signed his new contract two years ago, DeRozan made it clear he wanted his entire career to be with the Raptors. You know, my whole goal when I first got here was to make this whole city and this whole country be known. But that goal came to a screeching halt Wednesday morning. DeRozan, seemingly blindsided by it all, writing on Instagram, ain't no loyalty in this game. Crushed. Uh, I've talked to people who've known him today, and he's just... He's devastated by it because he really wanted to spend a 20-year career playing in Toronto. Raptors president Mazai Ujiri has not been afraid to make changes after playoff disappointment, but this, trading away a player so deeply loved in this city, will sting for a while. Devin Haru, CBC News, Toronto. And who is Leonard? Well, on the one hand, he's thought to be among the best players in the world when he's healthy, but his health is why some analysts are saying the Raptors are taking the biggest gamble in their history. And then there are questions about where he really wants to play. Uh, a lot of people up here don't know much about you. Can you, how would you describe yourself and what would you like people to know about you? I'm a fun guy. Uh, obviously, I love the game of basketball. Um, I mean, it's just more question you have to ask me um, in order for me to tell you about myself. I just can't give you a whole spiel. I don't even know where you're sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> What was your uh, initial thoughts when you heard you'd been traded to Toronto? Um, excited, knowing I'm coming to a great city that loves basketball, great organization, and uh, uh, happy that Danny was coming with me as well. Ah, included me. Okay. Oh, uh, I was wondering if I was going to get to talk today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> What's up, y'all? Danny Green here. I'm in Toronto, finally with the Raptors getting settled in. Check out the new place. Uh, it was early in the morning. I got a phone call from Pop. I got a phone call from a lot of people. But Pop was the one that uh, I returned first. And um, he told me it was a trade. I could see it adding up with all the people that were being signed and people that they drafted. That if they had to trade with Kawhi, it was probably more than one person getting that deal. Probably it was going to be me. A weird day for me because at the same time I'm sad to leave San Antonio but I'm excited to be in Toronto because I, I know how fun it is. And they're a good team and, and they're in the East. As sad as I was leaving San Antonio, I was still very excited for you know the new chapter of starting in Toronto. Passed seven, eight years in San Antonio, did a year in Cleveland, played in the D-League, which is now the G-League, played overseas in Slovenia. I've uh, been a little bit everywhere, so but right now adapting and adjusting to the Canadian life. Last couple years in San Antonio, we've had a very mature group. I won't call them old, but um, we had some older guys, which no experience. But you know, it's a different role for me being the vet in the locker room, and the oldest guys are like me, Kyle, CJ. We're only we're in our young 30s, but I'm excited to play with you know a younger group of guys, getting up and down, you know, faster pace. Uh, I feel great. The team feels great. I think it's it's not about me. It's about these guys. It's about basketball. The summer was crazy, but you know what? Um, now is basketball, and uh, we're excited. I think there actually is a lot of pressure on these Toronto Raptors, from the coaching staff to the front office to the players, because it's about the recruitment of Kawhi. And Masai recognized, listen, we have an incredible culture here. We have a remarkable city. We have a team that has a chance to compete for a championship. We have to capitalize on the window of opportunity we have. And Kawhi is exactly the right fit for that team to do that. It's a stroke of genius on the part of Masai and Bobby Webster to take this gamble because they have such a great story to tell.
Leafs crowd, cheers throughout the game, signs in the audience, even some MVP chants. I thought it was great. They had great energy tonight. Uh, they made a, made a good push for us in that fourth quarter when we, when we didn't have no energy. But uh, I love it tonight just about coming out here and playing and seeing all the love and support. Congratulations. Come on, baby. Coach Nick Nurse, first NBA official win. Congratulations, Coach. Don't sweat the technique. Don't sweat the technique. Now, it'll take a while. I change the pace to complete the beat. I drop the bass to MCs, get weak. For every road they trace, it's a scar they keep. It's when I speak, they freak to sweat the technique. I made my debut in 86 with a melody in a president's mix. And I would stay on target and refuse to miss. And I still make hits for beats. All these clubs and cars and jeeps. My underground sound vibrates the streets. MCs want to beef, then I play for keeps. When they sweat the technique. Don't sweat the technique. You don't have to speak, just see. And peep the technique. And that's the game. And the first team in the NBA to 6 0, the Toronto Raptors. Again, the Raptors, the best team in the Eastern Conference. I think we just do a pretty good job, you know, every time to just. When things are not going right, like early, you know, we just calm down. We don't, we don't get like, you know, all rattled and stuff. We just calm down and continue to play our game, and and, um, and you know, it, it's been working for us. It's a long, it's a long season. It's a marathon. It's a long, you know, it's a long ride. So we just gotta continue to get better. The beauty of sport is that you may see something you've never seen before, or you may see something that has never happened before. Tonight, we will watch two 6-0 teams compete. Anthony Cupo came out before the season said, look, I'm working hard, I'm not going to hog, but Kevin, I want to be MVP. It seems like his team is, is taking in that role of quiet leadership. Well, I like it, because when I, when I look at them, I, I look at every game, what type shots that you're getting, how quality of shot are you getting, the quality of the shot you're getting. Their spacing is beautiful. And they, everybody's wide, so when that extra pass goes, you have that extra time to load up that shot. Budenhauser has got those guys with more, more pace in the game, but much better spacing. They're a tough out when you can make a lot of threes like that and you have all that space to drive and play, the Bucks look really good. I think their pace was great. I think they played at the pace that they wanted to play tonight and uh, they kind of dictated the, the, the tempo of the game tonight. And, they played really good tonight. They played really well. So, you know, to perhaps, you know, they they did what they wanted to do tonight and they executed better than we did tonight. What was your primary message to these guys after this game? Uh, hurry up and shower. <laughs> uh, we got another game tomorrow. Let's go and, and, and let's start another win streak. The Raptors uh, play their worst game of the season. Your top scorer today was Serge Ibaka. 30 points and 9 rebounds. He had only 29 minutes of work. And he shot 12 of 21, 2 of 5 from 3. And out of this crazy, stupid loss that we had, he was a plus seven. Serge Ibaka, in my eyes, is playing his best basketball as a Toronto Raptor. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm so happy to see you guys here, man. Thank you for inviting me here. My name is Serge Ibaka. Welcome to Congo, my friends. In Congo, the rules are different. Life is in the street. 
is some ugly memory. My mom died, and at one point my dad was in the prison. He had nobody. No food, sleeping on the street. I didn't have nothing, but I was dreaming because the dream is free. All those kind of stuff just make me go so hard on basketball when I was young. And when the opportunity come, I was ready. My first time when I left Congo to go play in, in Europe, that's where I was starting to, to vision myself. You know why? I would really like people to know my story. I would like one day, you know, to see young, young people learn something from Serge Baka, to show the young people and to, see, to show the, the world, like, everything's possible. We're in Regent Park this evening where the neighborhood is coming out for the taste of Regent Park. There is a special guest of honor and it is Toronto Raptor Serge Ibaka. If it was not for basketball, I don't think I would not be here with those kids, you know. So, you know, sport, basketball is more than just a game for me, to me. You know, so uh, it was fun, you know, to be with them out there, to play ba basketball with them and then, uh, you know, spend a good time. And now we, we come back here and it's time for them to eat. You know, we're going we're gonna to serve them the food. Hello, everyone. This is Serge Ibaka, a.k.a. Mafuzi Chef. And welcome to How Hungry Are You? All right. So that's why I put you guys this one. Oh, oh, it's it's like, like, uh, this is Ben. Oh! Today, I cooked peanuts pizza. Oh, no. Nah. That's, <laughs> That's out for me, bro. <laughs> no, sorry, Bob. Hello to my friend, Pinky. Oh, no, I had, what, did I, what did I say, man? Pinky. It's a damn pig's head. Pig's head? Oh, yeah. come on, man. There we eat this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for coming. Daniel was a four, a six. Oh, Danny! Oh! Oh! Got you. Relax, relax, relax. Okay. Danny, 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 take it out. Danny, take it out. Danny, take it out. Okay, okay. The route is on early. And Ibaka, what is he doing? He's eight for eight, and he has 18 first quarter points in eight minutes. Moye, to me, is the most important about the team. You know, we got a W, and that's me. You know, I'm I'm happy now. Then you know, then just score a lot of points. You know, we got. To, I play. You know, it's true. I play great, but we got a W. To me, that's the most important. <laughs> How hungry are you? Very. Okay. Welcome everyone today. Uh, thank you for being here and uh, uh, very, very happy to uh, announce today uh, a new head coach. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And including Jobs. <laughs> hey, Doug. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Good. How does it feel to be back, coach? It feels good. Yeah, I mean, it'll be strange. Um, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. That's for sure. I'm looking forward to seeing him. Um, got a good team and they're doing well and no I'm not gonna get emotional I'll, I'll appreciate it I'll, I'll really absorb whatever comes my way you wouldn't be human if I sit here and said it wouldn't be touching because I left a lot of blood sweat and tears here uh, I can I left here with my head high and did what I was asked to do and we will stay here for a tribute for the all-time winning as coach in franchise history Dwayne Casey
Jesse's return to Toronto. A big one for Dwayne Casey. And uh, I, I, I just want to leave something. I, know, I feel good knowing that I left something here in Canada uh, that was positive and good and it wasn't all negative or, or bad. What you say, what you say if you took a bit of the Canadian way with you? What, what does that mean? Tim Hortons. <laughs> My son loves Tin Bits, and thank God they have Tin Bits and Tim Hortons in Detroit because he wouldn't be able to survive if they didn't. So um, I know that even though they've had a couple of games, a few games this year, they should not have lost. Uh, there's no question about that. Right now, if I had to pick at this particular moment, it would be the Toronto Raptors. The NBA on TNT is presented by State Farm. It's the Golden State Warriors and the Toronto Raptors, two of the top teams in the league. The Raptors at 18 and four, six straight wins. I just, I've been watching them. Nick Nurse has been very impressive. The combination of height, athleticism, experience, uh, defense, and a closer. And I'm looking at all of those things, and I'm saying to myself, you're going to go against the Golden State Warriors. It's going to require all of those things in order to knock the Warriors off. And I believe that Toronto has it. Well, Myers, with that spray toe. This is Seattle. He has been just terrific. He just had his second season of the league. It's more consistency, but he still does that on both ends of the floor. Getting a nice block. Seattle able to take advantage of the break. Follow it. Nobody believes in the Toronto Raptors. Uh, even last year when I was on that bandwagon, Shaq ended up being right. He says, I'm not riding with those guys. They're not good enough. They're different with Kawhi. And I like the way Toronto is playing, but let's not forget, last year they had the best record in the Eastern Conference and they let us down in the playoffs. I'm not riding until I see them do something. To I'm them. all in. Okay, I, I told you. I'm I all that's, in. That's, I like them. I'm glad they're in first. But yeah. I don't they're, know they're, different. they're different this year, Shaq, only because of the versatility. Come on. It's, it's totally different. different. You have two guys in the starting five who are NBA champions, who know what it takes to get there. They have the experience. Oh, for sure. Final seconds. And a red hits from near midcourt. A three for the rest. Go to them in crunch time consistently. They just passed up open shots, follow the ball around, get it to him, let him be your close. Out of the seats here in Toronto. Oh, no! Just the crowd. Here's the ring. Ten seconds. Goes to the corner. The shooter. Three out of the hits to tie it up. Kevin Durant. But what's different about the Raptors this year? And this is what happened last night. They have an elite superstar. And the, and the two guys from San Antonio who have rings showed up, Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard, and said, halt, <laughs> we're going to stop this nonsense. We're going to win this game. The Green for three. Yes. Toronto back up by three. With two minutes to go on this five-minute overtime. This Raptors team are going to represent the East in the NBA Finals. They got so many two-way players, and obviously Kawhi's back and playing at MVP level. And Kyle Lowry's a great leader as well as a bull, he's a bulldog out there. So it's going to be a great test for us. And um, who knows, might be a preview of June, but uh, they got something really special up there in Canada right now. Everyone went into that Raptors Warriors game talking about how it may be an NBA Finals preview and I get it but come on Golden State was missing two of its best players the East that's far from settled in terms of who's coming out of that whole Toronto Boston Philly Milwaukee rectangle and it's still only November so there's that too yeah. Kyle Lowry struggling struggling mm -hmm. over the last little bit not looking like his usual self the three not falling some talk of a back injury I don't buy it how do you explain away the last little stretch from a perennial all-star that has been underwhelming? Sometimes I just think he gets into a little bit of a funk, and I think he just gets a little bit into his head. No, so it's all mental, that. not physical or anything I else. I can't like be physical. That. How do you have the, season, the start to the season that he had at the beginning, and then all of a sudden have 15 points in five games?
I think you can tie it back to when he sat down with Rachel Nichols oh, before the Golden State game. Sure, he, he had the conversation about Masai Ujiri, and he said... How would you define your relationship with Masai Ujiri right now? Uh, he's, the, he's the president of the basketball operations, and that's it. For me, it's, I go my here and do my job. Since then, he stopped shooting the basketball. You know, my first year here, he was already kind of embedded here, had his old, you know, his guys, and I was just here like, you know, I'm just a new guy, I'm just trying to find my way, and I'm going to be here a couple years, and I'm out, so I ain't going to make it tight. I didn't see him outside of his <laughs> work facility. Like, At ever. So what happened? What changed? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but that's all we talk about, that's just the beauty of a friendship, you know. It just happened, you know, right. it was just one, one of those things, and, you know, you look up, and it's like, Damn, I'm stuck with you. What are you reading? We're studying House Warriors' defensive tactics against King James. It wasn't their tactics. It was their talent. But we have the talent. We just need smart strategy and for the gods to finally smile on us. Lord Ujiri, I pledge that I will do whatever it takes. Yes, we'd give anything for the six. I know. Forgive me. Excuse me, excuse me. Get out of my way. No, no, no. Kyle, don't let them do it. Where's Lord Ujiri? It'll all be over soon. No, I demand to see Lord Ujiri. My lord, you, you can't. You said you wouldn't. How could you do this to your most loyal knight? All right, summon the trade raptor. I'll shoot more threes! Lord Ujiri! How could you do this? He's my best friend! Please, please! I'll, I'll try on defense! I'll shoot him from anywhere! I'll shoot him from behind the half court! No, 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 no! no, 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 no. Two thirty in the morning, my phone. I'm in, I'm in bed, sleep, and uh, my phone's going off. At like two thirty in the morning. It was two thirty in the morning, but I'm like, I get the phone. I'm like, it's Demar. So I pick up. He's like, he says some choice words that I'm not gonna say on <laughs> ESPN. <laughs> um, but he's like, yo, I just got traded to San Antonio. I mean, Demar That's was very best. open this summer about feeling betrayed. Did yeah. you feel betrayed? I felt betrayed because he felt betrayed because that's my guy, that's my best friend. So, yeah, I felt some type of way on a personal side. It's changed the way you play on the court. Yeah. You're taking a lot less shots. Yeah. And how does it feel like to sort of have that part of your game dialed back somewhat? Um, I think I'll get to that point where it's a little bit more aggressive offensively, but, you know, we're still just trying to get everybody going. Sometimes you got to sacrifice a little bit to make the team go, and, you know, you got to figure it out as a leader. Just got to play better. I can't even. I don't make excuses. She's gotta, I don't have any excuses to make. Um, I'm just not playing well. Well, so as simple as that. I, I, I make. You know, I'm a player that uh, I have to play better. Extra pass to Lowry. Bingo. Uh oh. Much is gone right, unless you're a Toronto fan. Just going out there and play. Yeah. yeah, my guys, Freddie did a great job of um, pushing the ball, and, and the tempo was great. Um, you know, he, he gave me some open looks, and uh, my teammates did a good, really good job. And you know, they always support me. They always, you know, always say it, but it was just time. Yeah, you know, it was just time for me to step up and play. There are a lot of tough decisions that you made with this franchise. What are you most proud of, and what was the hardest thing for you to do in this offseason? Um, I'll start with hardest. It's obvious trading DeMar and, and letting go of Coach Casey. Those were two hard things. I talk about it um, every, all the time. The business is, is, is just a tough place to be. 
Um, I'm proud that we, we, we gave that opportunity. You know, I'm proud that we had great moments for five years. Is this move that you made in order to get a guy that you think can be at that MVP level, is that all it was about, to have that guy that can lift you towards an NBA championship? He's lifted before. All you guys have your Kawhi Leonard gear on tonight. So let me ask you guys, Kawhi Leonard, favorite player in the league? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Guys, is there any cooler nickname than the Claw in the NBA right now? Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. I don't know anyone else that has anything like that. This is the Claw, baby. Woo! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Tomorrow night, this should be very interesting. Kawhi goes back to San Antonio, and there are games on the schedule you always yeah. sort of yeah. circle. What do you expect that to be? I think the reception will be a little icy. You can't say you deserve to be uh, to, to get that respect if you didn't give that respect on your way right. out. You can't come back talking about, hey, well, you guys aren't going to cheer for me. You're not going to give me that love. Right. It doesn't work that way. I don't. I don't think it's going to be a real pretty scene. Two, three. Wait. Wait. from North Carolina, number 14, Danny Green. 6'7 forward from San Diego State, number two, Kawhi Leonard. 6'9 forward from New Mexico State, number 43, Pascal Siakam. I got game, I can go anywhere. Set the lineups, come over, you hear Kawhi receiving the booze, he takes to the rim and counts in the foul. Would he get booed, would he not? And just because the man doesn't talk does not mean that he doesn't handle his business on the court. Look for him to be aggressive all night long. More importantly, put pressure on the defense by driving to the hole like that. Oh, it was a thunderous slam. And a timeout taken by Nick Nurse. It's a 15-3 run. Try to pick up the wonder trainer. Trader. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how they can do that in unison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I felt badly about it. Uh, Kawhi's a, a high character guy. You know, we all make decisions in our lives, what we're going to do with our futures. And he has that same right as any of us. Uh, so I, I felt badly, in all honesty. What were your thoughts on that tribute video? I didn't look at it. I don't ever look at that Jumbo Tron before the game. Are you going to watch the tribute video now that you know about it? Should I? Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'll watch it then. It's been a while since I've talked to you guys, and it was killing me every single day. You know why? I'm like, oh, who do the Raptors play next? Oh, right. It's this game. The story in the game today, DeMar DeRozan makes his return to Toronto for the first time as an opponent. You know, you could say you love a woman. Just because she come back and say she don't like you the next week and it ain't your fault, you know, you just, hey, all right, cool. I still love you, though. Uh, I don't know. She she moved on and I moved on. Right. As long as we both happy. With the ninth pick in the 2009 NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select 
Dumar DeRozan from the University of Southern California. Yo, this is how I represent. I rock the mic 110%. It's intimate. I keep the party moving like an immigrant. Binary star, superstar. It's no coincidence. Every verse is intricate. This ain't a circus in a tent. We don't get down like the clowns and the kids. I'm used to being indigent. You said it's all about the vengeance. Grab a telescope to see my view is like astronomy. It ain't all about economy, so the fact that all these whack MCs is making G's don't bother me. Honestly, my number one policy is quality. Never sell my soul, it's my philosophy. High velocity, lyrics like Nostradamus making prophecy. I told you cats a long time ago, it ain't no stopping. Good, good. Usually I don't do request numbers, unless, of course, I have been asked to do so. Join the Toronto Raptors in thanking Damar DeRozan for all he has done for our city and for this team. Thank you, Damar, for nine memorable seasons. The fans don't want it to end. They want to keep the ovation going. DeRozan now back in the huddle. Well earned, well deserved for a first class individual. Honoring DeMar DeRozan once again for his nine sensational seasons here in Toronto. done a tremendous job on the backboards as well, sir. Left that one short. DeRozan with the rebound. Spurs up by one. And a turnover. Leonard. Raptors lead it. They ripped DeRozan at midcourt. Yeah, you'd be like, damn, she's still fine as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the question always is, uh, can you jump from that winning level to maybe a championship level? And we'll keep trying, you know, like I'm not saying this is the answer, but we got to try. And that sometimes has change has to happen then. One of the big reasons why is Masai Ujiri. He took over a troubled franchise in 2013. Guys, I'm home. I love Toronto. And quickly instilled a winning culture. But Ujiri's impact goes well beyond the bright lights of the NBA. Raised in Nigeria, he's the first African to run a major North American sports franchise. But he's never lost sight of his roots. In 2003, he founded Giants of Africa using basketball as a tool to educate and improve the lives of young Africans. 
As young kids, as young youth, you have to aspire to be great. Masai returns to Africa every summer, teaching and leading the next generation. Okay? Yeah. okay. Guys, listen up. Ooh, yeah! Ooh, yeah! Pa, pa, pa! Oh! NBA, we are coming! NBA, we are coming! Africa, we are happy! Africa, we are happy! The reality is, I, I have to pinch myself sometimes, you know, like, because it's a dream come true. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity I've been given and um, I dream for more, you know, you want more. <laughs> you know, like, what the hey, like, you, you win, you know, like, win. That, that to me in sports, go and win. You know, like, how do you figure out a way to win? Are you comfortable with this Raptors group staying pat or do you see Masai Ujiri making a move for another player in order to solidify their chances? Unless you're making a move for a star, I just don't see what moves the needle for you guys right now. You're good. I, it's, I, I don't want to give up Pascal. I, I don't want to give up OG. Do you win a championship? Who's out there? Tell me. Name me a guy. I'm not sure. Who's I'm saying, there. would you probe? I'm open to probing. I'm open to asking the question. I, I, I don't think. I, feel I, don't like think the Trevor, now. I don't think Trevor Ariza moves the needle for nope, you. Maybe be him. Marcus all cleaning out his locker last night before That's the sad. game. Sad. Trade rumors would be an understatement there. Memphis reportedly close to dealing Gasol to Charlotte last night. All right, some NBA people right haven't heard this, so I'll just read it. The Raptors called Memphis offering Kyle Lowry and Jonas Valanciunas for Connolly and Mark Gasol. But Michael Grange followed up and said the version of Lowry and JV for Connolly and Gasol talks, I'm hearing it did not progress very far. Andrew Marjanowski tweeting, Toronto is finalizing a trade to secure Mark Gasol. And Ramona, I said, hey, this feels like an arms race in the East. Back. Let's start with the biggest name traded today, and that was Grizzlies big man, Mark Gasol, heading north of the border, going to Toronto. Mark Gasol like is that. a recent All-Star. Like he's that, a very too. good player. I understand Toronto. he's 34, 35. He's rejuvenated, right? We agree. Time. That is a big time move to me. Yep. But I think Mark can be Jonas Valanciunas. Part two, uh, he can finish games. Uh, he'd be a great matchup for Joel Embiid. They didn't give up much. It's an upgrade. I'm not over the moon for it. I don't think this makes them the number one team in the East with a, with a star, I, but it's a good move. Uh, we, we want to welcome uh, Marcus Hall, a uh, phenomenal player and uh, a real, uh, I think, a winner. understand the chance that you have, you know, coming uh, from a team that uh, hasn't made the playoffs uh, last year, and more, more than likely not this year as well, um, you know, having a chance to be back there, you know how much it means, and, uh, and, and you look at the team and, uh, and, and the way the franchise is set up and every, everyone around it, um, you, you understand what they're going for, so um, it's, all, it's all great things. It was rumored it came out that he didn't want to give up Pascal or OG. Masai wanted to keep both of those kids. Masai made it work. He found a way to do both. Gasol is still the win now move. He still has Pascal and OG. And hey, let's be serious. The lesson here, trust Masai. He knows what he's doing. Knocked away, Kyle. Pascal with the slam dunk. And what Pascal Siakam can turn into next year or the year after, I don't know. 
but the future looks very, very bright. And it looked massively bright tonight. <laughs> Again, Pascal Siakam, 44 points, 10 rebounds on 15 to 25 shooting. There's no beating around the bush. That's just gangster work. Now having the opportunity and being out there and just having, you know, the, the right teammates around me and, and, and the coaching staff just, you know, just letting me be myself, um, that helps too. Growing up the youngest of six children in Cameroon, Pascal Siakam was drawn to the sport of soccer. But it was his father's dream to see one of his four sons play in the NBA. He loved basketball. He talked about it every day. So, I mean, that's why, like, for me, this moment is, like, more, even more special because it's not just me. It's like a family dream. But before he could even play in his first college game, Pascal received devastating news about the man who had supported him throughout his basketball journey. His father had been killed in a car accident. Pascal's father was gone, but his dream lived. During the 2016 draft, Raptors president and African native Masai Ujiri was settling into his decision for the number 27 overall pick. So what are we doing, guys? Tell me. Got to make a call here. Pascal, I'll go with my scouts this time. Yes? Yes, Pascal. We want to pick Pascal Siakam. This drive night, and I was like, okay, this is it. You know, like, I'm just going to sit, down, sit back and, and just wait for the moment. And um, like 30 seconds before, kind of, I think my agent told my brother, so like they kind of knew already. I didn't. I, I sat there, and, and then they said my name, and my, my brothers were going crazy. People were going crazy. I was just sitting there. Like, I didn't. I didn't know how to like react, you know, it was just, you know, a lot of emotions. Surrounded by his entire family and dozens of friends, June 23rd, 2016 was supposed to be the day Fred Van Bleet's dreams came true. They'd all turned up to watch the NBA draft, expecting at any moment to hear Fred's name called. But one by one, the dreams of 60 other basketball players came true. When Fred's cell phone finally rang, still reeling, Fred faced his crowd of supporters. I was so disappointed, but I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I've been against the odds my whole life, and uh, it's not going to stop now, so. Uh... Now that draft party, does that give you nightmares still? At the time, I was I was pissed off and I was uh, upset and I was disappointed and you know I was sad and and all of those things and I was embarrassed. The Toronto Raptors offered him a spot on their minor league development team. Fred begrudgingly took Toronto's offer and once again the underdog had to prove himself because in the minors there are no guarantees of ever getting called up. During his first full season in the minors, he led the team to its first development league championship making it impossible for the big club to pass him over again. Fred made the best of the playing time he got. Raptors head coach Nick Nurse quickly recognized and one of the best substitutes in the league. He flies under the radar, but what does he do to your team? Like you said, he's been kind of the uh, unnoticed underdog for a long time. He's not very big, he's not very fast, uh, but he can play, man, and he is winning spirit, his winning attitude, his work ethic, um, his IQ, all those things are contagious and, and really help our team. Green found Van Vliet. Great look inside to Siakam. I have to ask myself about this. The Eastern Conference is a question mark in my mind. Are we sleeping and disrespecting the Toronto Raptors? I think we are. This is the best team the Raptors have ever had yes. stepping into the playoffs and the expectations should be through the roof right now. And we're tied, Hubie Brown. Raptors are not going to take their time out. They're going to give it to Kawhi. Now you have plenty of time here. You got plenty of time to get a good shot. Matched up against Harkless. They play two man game here. Lillard gets switched on to him. Kawhi for the win. Oh, what a roll! Kawhi, push. No timeout. No timeout. And that's the ball game. This ain't your grandpappy's uh, Toronto Raptors. Yeah.
Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard bring something different to the table. They haven't been there for the ghosts of Christmas past, so they're just here to ball. That's a tough one. I, I would, I would probably say because I've seen, I've seen D'Angelo Russell be pretty special. That's Augustine this season. knocks down the three. But, but I would say, see, I, I mean, he was just trying to find a role on a team last year on this team. Now he's a, he's a huge factor. Leonard gets denied by Vucevic, saved by Gordon. Here comes Orlando. Gordon flying to the rim, can't hit the layup. Vucevic sets up Fournier. Orlando keeps it alive. Fournier from the wing. He connects. The magic roaring back in this second and built a seven point lead. Timeout Toronto. You're gonna love this one, Tass. If yeah. it wasn't yeah, so I believable, I wouldn't <laughs> believe it. But the Raptors lost game one again. This time it was to the Magic, thanks to 25 points and a game winning three from, that's right, DJ Augustine and a big fat zero points from Kyle Lowry. It's just one game, but same old Raptors. <laughs> I'm not worried yet for Toronto. I'm not going to do, oh, same old Toronto with Kawhi Leonard and Siakam being that improved. Lowry was terrible, but we've seen that before. And if you're Kyle Lowry, this is the guy that's been to the all, been an all-star numerous times. On the big stage, you have to step up. And I'm a Kyle Lowry fan. I always love his game, but too many times we've seen this in the playoffs. This can't keep happening to one of your best players on your team if you think you're really going to make some noise and are serious about contending for an NBA title. Come on, man. And with the local DBC news, Evan Kuj with a triumphant comeback. More as solo. But tonight... Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I'm rocking my pants. Foot suckers and fear. Making the tears rain down like a monsoon. Listen to the bass go boom, explosion.
most teams, we could start here and make it more difficult on them as the season, as the series went on. And we were not able to do that, obviously. And instead, you know, their defense was the key, but their offense also um, got better and better. Good job. Let's, uh, I, th I think we, uh, we got tomorrow off. We got the game on the weekend, right? Next game Saturday, possibly Sunday. Saturday's the earliest it can be, so we'll take tomorrow, we'll take off, get you back in, we'll get on the thing. Let's, we, we, it took us a game to get into it, but we've got better every game. Let's, let's, let's keep on building on this and bring it for game one, right? Great job. Good job. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. One, two, three. Rest. Now is when things get real funky. You have Milwaukee playing Boston and the Toronto Raptors facing off against the Philadelphia 76ers. A rematch of many, many moons ago. Well, a lot of anticipation, not only for this series, but for the second round in general. You've got enormous expectations for these two teams, Greg, and they've made no secret about it. They are all in trying to get to that ultimate goal. It's got the feel of a heavyweight foul. Yeah. They both got dominant superstars, and as you mentioned, the expectations are so high for both. I've never seen so much put on a second round series, but you're going to look at the loser of this series potentially having to revamp their entire roster. So a lot riding on the line here starting tonight. Take it easy. Shot clock winding down. See how he drains it to open play. How about the elevation of his status as a big-time performer for this Raptors team? show that carried the Raptors past the Sixers in game one of their best of seven. Kawhi Leonard, Pascal Siakam combined went 28 for 38 for 74 points and those two outscored Phillies starting five in a 13 point win. We went down 0-1. Uh, I'm sure we're going to come back. We went down 0-1. I had a, a shot of bad percentage. Uh, so I'm definitely going to adjust. Uh, everybody's going to adjust. Guys, true or false, the Sixers have figured it out. Sixers are top heavy with no bench, but look at the contribution they got last night. They, they're yeah, getting contributions yeah, off the true, bench. Max. Yeah, that's true, Max, but is that about the Sixers or is it about the Raptors? Toronto's supposed to have a good bench. Yeah, well, evidently not. I think there's is a comment here full already. Full-blown panic. It says Nick Nurse is so bad at making adjustments. Yeah. Like, you've had two games to realize how bad the bench is. The bench, you don't even know at this point if any of these guys are going to be able to knock down a shot and give you anything and to hold on to lead. Kyle was deferring all the time. Yeah. Pascal looked mediocre. It was it was just Kawhi, and that was it. We got to help him. We got to help him. Myself, especially. You know, I, I got to help him um, score more. I got to help him on the floor. You know. You know, we all got to help him. He's playing unbelievable right now, but we're not giving him any help. What was your sense of uh, of Joel Embiid out there tonight? Uh, he played great. Um, you know, um, he made his presence. They have blown it open. Embiid fakes Embiid down the lane. The worst part for the Raptors is, are they going to be the team last year that gave in to LeBron yeah, and yeah. that intimidation with LeBron shooting fadeaways and then it was over. I think this is a bit of a different team. Do we say that every year? Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, but they don't have Kawhi. They didn't have Kawhi Leonard in the past. Game four is obviously the Raptors' season on the line. Yeah, must win for the Raptors.
Embiid got picked off. Butler picked up Leonard. It didn't matter. Kawhi Leonard drills another jumper. Embiid driving. Spins. Missed the finish. And boarded by Ibaka. He had a great look at it on his bread and butter move. That, that's that's him at his best. Usually that would be an automatic. But more important, they didn't foul him, which was great defense. Raptors up by one, one timeout left. Simmons pressing up on Leonard. Let's see that one. switches. Fires a long one. Oh, my, Nothing oh, but net. Now, so why not? Come on. Embiid came out and the man following, they had him. It had to be an elevation right there. What a pressure shot. The lead is back up to four. He's got 39. Could Toronto find a way to steal a game, send it back tied to Toronto, and now make this a best two out of three series? Mm. And they did that. Kawhi, <clears throat> show enough Leonard. Mm. Woo, that was what we call a virtuoso. Really? That was a virtuoso. What is it about your temperament that seems like you're never flustered or worried or get sped up? Just kind of move at your pace. Um, just really growing up and learning from players, watching, watching, um, you know, great players, seeing how they, uh, you know, either control the game or just playing at their own speed and not being try or not trying to be rushed by the defender. But um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be on some pretty good teams early, playing in a regular season. I had times uh, that I took those shots, and they came up short. So. I guess I was thinking as well at the time, um, just making sure I put it up high and at least get it to the back rim. And um, it's the best of three now. So I just feel like having the same mentality. Um, don't get too down or too low or worry about, you know, where you at. Just focus on the game and um, see what happens. The next game, game five was 2-2. Uh, you gotta win that home game. You gotta win that home game. And see? The Raptors lose tonight. They ain't going back to Canada for a game seven. Six is gonna close them out Thursday night. better than I bet any Toronto fan expected. The Raptors just annihilate the Philadelphia 76ers. In favor of Toronto, Simmons just gave it away. Gasol, the lead pass to Siakam! A rack attack! You know, uh, after we lost uh, the first game in Philly, we was a kind of down mentally, you know, but well, now we got our momentum back. We're excited to go back to Philadelphia. No, nobody's, nobody's walking out of here, woe is me. I, I promise you that. We have a prideful team. We have a team that, that had a poor performance tonight. We let one slip in Philadelphia. We wished Joel were healthy. We felt like we could have won in Philadelphia. But nobody's walking out of here thinking anything else. But we're excited to go back to Philadelphia and find a way to win. You know, when I look at Philly, there's two games in this series. I've been incredibly impressed with their mental toughness. Game three, I thought was maybe, considering opponent, one of the best performances that we've seen. And then, of course, what we saw last night. Lowry, that is his third, and Butler urging the crowd to get into it. Just as a follow-up, have you even allowed yourself to start thinking about game seven? And yeah, it's, it's going to be a big game for us. Uh, we got to play harder. We got to do everything we need to do to win the game. You know, it's, Game seven is do or die. Win or go home, really. The Raptors just lost in a blowout in game six, so we're heading to a game seven on Sunday, which, you know, everyone was trying to avoid. I know that the mood of the fan base is probably a little bit negative right now, but I've decided to be positive today. This is where you find out yeah. who you are, what you are, what you've been putting in, and this is where Nick Nurse was hired to do. This is what Brett Brown was hired to do to get them over the hump. It's just right now both these organizations collide and somebody's not going to the next to the
for the next round. Knowing their woes throughout how many years now, firing their head coach last season after being coach of the year, always failing in the playoffs, it does seem like the fan base over in Toronto and just the media and all of the noise in Toronto is a little bit more heavier than what the Sixers have on them. This game Sunday night, the, do the chain of events it could set off are borderline frightening to me, considering where we stand right now in Raptors history. So no pressure. Tobias Harris as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you, if Jimmy Butler, who loves the moment, if he gets the opportunity to take it. Short, caught by Harris. Two-point game. Here comes Butler driving. Layup is caught. He ties the game. 4.2 to go. Knifing his way, Jimmy Butler. You can't make this tough up. <laughs> Wow. Also watch the quick pass to Curry after he inbounds. Curry has it. Carter trying to get free. Carter at the buzzer. No good. And the Sixers hold on and advance to the conference finals. Gasol will inbound. Siakam back in. Got to be aware of the inbounder here if you're filling. It's off to Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? No! Game! Series! 
Toronto has won! So the Toronto Raptors don't have the longest track record in the world, but it has been nearly 25 years, thousands of games, and we can now identify the exact best single second in franchise history. And yet all of it turned out to be just lead up to Kawhi doing this. <laughs> I've never seen a guy, if you look at this, been able to take a, a game winning shot and be squatting, waiting yeah, watch for him. Go. He's watching, he's squatting, it's waiting like, to see what's yeah. gonna go. I've never seen that. Oh, I don't know, only for the second time in history did a butter buzzer beater in an elimination game. The Jordan shot over Craig Elo, the most iconic in the, in the argument for most iconic shot in the history of basketball, and now Kawhi. I'll be honest, I'm still sitting here, and I don't truly believe that that <laughs> shot went in. I couldn't concentrate watching Game of Thrones. First thing I did when I woke up this morning was make sure that actually happened. It wasn't a dream, because it does feel sort of that surreal yeah. for, for the franchise like the Raptors that don't have a ton of success. That was a heck of a shot. Everybody is happy in Toronto for a day. have been by double digits. This team is rolling, Shaq. Two games are enough for me to say this is a wrap. What do you see? 
It definitely is a wrap. I can't see Toronto winning more than one game this series. I actually said it was over after game one. One of my favorite coaches was Paul Silas. I asked him one year when I was in Phoenix, I said, what kind of team we got? He says, oh, we're going to suck. I said, coach, I think we got a good team. He said, no, we don't. He says, when I don't know what I'm going to get every night, that makes it very difficult for us to coach. Yeah. He says, if a guy get me 30 one night and 10 the next night, people are going to say, he averaging 20. That's what's happening with the Toronto Raptors right now. Guys might get me 20 or they might get me six. That's not going to beat this Bucks team because the one thing about Milwaukee, they got guys who can score. Like, we know that Kawhi Leonard can score. We're not getting nothing out of Ibaka, Gasol, Siakam, or Kyle Lowry. We got guys coming in on the Milwaukee bench who are getting double digits. That's going to be very difficult for them. So the positive is we're going back to Toronto. That's the only positive thing. Where do you go from here, Kawhi? Where do you go from here? I'm um, going to Toronto, game three. <laughs>
Fred Van Vliet already had a daughter at home, but what he didn't know at the time is how the arrival of Fred Jr. would impact his game. Up to that point in the postseason, he was in a slump, averaging just four points a game, shooting 26% from the field and only 20% from three. In the playoff game since Fred Jr., Welcome, you know, little Freddy, Freddy Jr. to the building. So, so that's the formula. That's the key. Zero sleep. Hey, three I days. guess zero sleep. Have a lot of babies, and uh, go out there and let loose. When you went down two nothing to Milwaukee, some pronounced the series is over. I was one of those subs. <laughs> what do you see as the key move that turned the series around and into your favor? Well, surprisingly, you don't associate Toronto Raptors with being a tougher team. But with Norman Powell, with Mark Gasol, with Serge Ibaka, they have out-toughed Milwaukee to a large degree. Shake it up on that last play, but obviously all right. Renee's on the floor. Here is Van Vliet. There you go. No hesitation. Catch and shoot. Uh, just staying the course. You know, we never put our heads down. We never thought it was going to be all this. We never thought it would be easy. We still don't think it's going to be easy. Um, we understood, like, listen, this is the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, it's never going to be easy. It's going to be tough. But, you know, we just go out there and play our game. I'm not, I'm not afraid of the moment. Um, I enjoy it. And, you know, this was what I work out for in the summer. this don't talk to me talk to these people it's about these people right here we are like a college sports team the Toronto Raptors are a college sports team I promise you I love Toronto I love this team and we're going to the, the NBA finals let's go oh. you got a foul right away so Leonard takes it to the backcourt Lowry run into here's Siakam as the result of that collision at center court they tried to foul I don't believe in the Bucks right now. I think it's over with. Yeah. yeah. I think that I think Toronto has snatched their soul. Kawhi guy. Kawhi guy Giannis in a straight jacket. Uh, Producer Steve, I want to know if we can get the bar at the bottom that says Kendrick Colin. Toronto has snatched their soul. Because <laughs> I would just like to see that on TV on the jump. Yeah, the boom. Uh, there you go. Well, that's, yeah. and that's what I wanted. And Thank you, Producer whew. Steve. Remember who told you guys? Don't be so quick to jump off the bandwagon. I'm going to keep reminding you, Raptor fans, remember the moment that y'all jumped off the bandwagon and where we are now. Because it's 3-2 Raptors. You're coming home for game six. You got to win game six. The crowd has to be rocking in game six in Toronto with a chance to go to the NBA Finals on the line. been crazy I mean today is one day removed from the 25th anniversary of when the team was given its name and we're, we're not even talking about playing just given its name and all those all that preparation all that vision all that stuff that went into um, getting to this point has finally come true there have been 17 win seasons 21 win seasons Glenn Grunwald taking booze at midcourt at Maple Leaf Gardens. Playoff heartbreak, sweeps, and it's what makes you, it, what defines you, it, it's what toughens you. Um, you know, they always say pressure makes diamonds or pressure breaks pipes. And right now, the pressure and all the stuff that the team has been through, hopefully for them, it turns into a diamond. Yeah, yeah, make some noise, here we go! Woo! 26 years. Is a long time. 1993 was the last time a Toronto team from one of the big four North American sports sat in this position. One win away from advancing to the championship series. To borrow a phrase from those glory days, win tonight and for the first time in history, the Eastern Conference Championship banner will fly north of the border.
Someone on this Raptors team is going to have to supply some energy. Mm -hmm. Diving on the floor, getting an extra tip in, doing the little things. You're not going to get the score back in one play. Still an important player off the bench. Going back to their previous series. Leonard working hard to uh, locate shots and hits. It counts and the foul. Middleton goes behind the back and lost it. Lowry with the steal. He has Giannis behind him. Gets to let it. He stops a facial by Kawhi Leonard. Over Giannis on the control. day one since I've been here and uh, this group of guys we got back here were special um, you know we work extremely hard and uh, you know the fans have given us everything we needed tonight uh, our families our friends you know we, we're not satisfied though it's just a little bit loud out here I think Lindsay threw to me but I'm not sure it is wild here in Jurassic Park the day after the chills remain. I'm still in a lot of shock. It's uh, I didn't, I didn't, I thought I woke up, I was like, I can't, I gotta be dreaming. There's no way this is happening right now. Here at ODTO, a Toronto consignment store, there have been a steady stream of fans all day coming in to take photos in front of this mural depicting Kawhi Leonard's famous buzzer beater. Throughout the night, there was people outside of the store taking photos of the one outside. Since we've opened, it's just been a mob here taking photos, which we support. It's literally, uh, it's a holiday, to be honest. That's what it feels like. It feels like a holiday. It looks like no one's working, <laughs> and everyone's just in a good mood. There's a lot of high-fiving on the street with people I don't know, and I think that's amazing. Yeah, they made history. That means that's a great thing. Yeah. But we're just looking for the, for the, for the finals, see if they can make another. 
Okay, so the wait is over for Raptors fans. The Raps will continue their quest for their first ever NBA championship tonight. Sounds so good. It will be the first time an NBA Finals game is played outside of the U.S. So, of course, all eyes here on the North tonight for Game 1. Jurassic Park right now. A lot of diehard fans already starting to make their way through here. A lot of media from all over the world getting set as well. Jurassic Park has nothing on Jurassic Park West. They have completely transformed Celebration Square, and these fans are in it to win it. Now, this is going to be one of 27 areas across Canada that you can have uh, a chance to watch the Raptors if you can't get into the game. Highest fans <laughs> anywhere in the whole Raptor nation. Let's go! Let's go! We're extremely excited about uh, about the Raptors. Obviously, my son is a uh, a massive uh, Raptors fan. I want to commend the Toronto Raptors because they gave me cause to pause. But I'm going with the Golden State Warriors. I'm just doing it. I'm picking Toronto to win this series. Jalen, you are. Jalen, why? Why are you picking Toronto? Because is KD is injured. I saw KD limp into the plane. KD ain't playing in this series. Correct. So, correct. Right. Correct. Right. Jen and I collaborated on this. All morning, and, Nick. And, That's why we were in there. And we believe in the storyline compared to who's the best team. Golden State, with all the experience that they have, they're a better team on paper. But the Kawhi Leonard story, since he was traded, has been the theme of the playoffs. Jen and I have decided. And man, this is tough for us. We are going to go with the Raptors. They get it done tonight, and they win the series in seven. Siakam back to Leonard and gets the roll. The narrative was, okay, they haven't been on this stage before. This right. franchise has come up short. But the bottom line, as you said, you have veterans. These guys aren't young players. Obviously, Siakam is a young player and yeah. played fantastic tonight. And, and maybe not the same exact experience in terms of what Golden State's done. But they came out, they weren't phased. There was emotion here in the building. Uh, there was a lot of buildup and excitement mm -hmm. leading into this game. And they came out and took care of business. They came out like they were the defending champs. You know, Siakam, you know, we, we're talking about him being, a, you know, the most improved player in the league. This is, this is not, you know, abnormal. This is what he's capable of doing. You know, he, he's become a guy. And so... You know, you got to – he put a lot of work in to get there, and, and I respect that. But like I said, uh, I got to take him out of this series, and that's on me. Just outside of Jurassic Park, just outside of Scotiabank Arena, where all of the GTA, all of Canada, is celebrating a win by the Raptors in Game 1. I tried to tell you peeps, I tried to tell Canada that guess what? You're going back to Oakland 1-1. Why? Because this is the situation. The Toronto Raptors periodically, not consistently, but periodically, as you said, short arm shots. They struggle. And the reality of the situation is, is that when you have difficulty in putting the ball in the hole, the Golden State Warriors are going to get you. 16 points. Vigadala wide open for three, and Golden State regains the lead. He looks at the Toronto bench, nods his head. 
and it's 16 straight points. Beautiful pass by Cousins as well. Iguodala dream on Green, banks it home. What an avalanche here from Golden State, a 13-point lead. Um, you know, certainly the offense hurt the chance to get the defense set up there. So, yeah, I'm going to have to rewatch that. I'm probably not going to enjoy that very much, but I'm going to have to check it out. With the series tied going into Oakland and no longer being on home court, what are the prominent uh, focal points that you're going to bring over to the next couple of games? It, we're in the same boat there, kind of. We're in coming here. You know, we got to go out there and get one. We all just understand the moment. We're very locked in and focused on adapting, you know, to the circumstances that are thrown at us right now with, you know, a lot of injuries and kind of uncertainty of who's going to be able to play. The mood's a little bit different. This is the most banged up the Golden State Warriors have been throughout their five-year run. After playing in 120 consecutive playoff games, Clay Thompson will now tonight miss his first playoff action. In a lot of ways, this is the Raptors' best opportunity to take control of the series and to take home court advantage back. Got to stay locked in, uh, mentally tough, mentally focused, and uh, 448. This is your time to go do it right now. Get back to trusting what you've done. One, two, three, win! Once again! Once again. It's the infamous back in the house once again. Live the life, dad of diamonds and guns, and now gem full gaps. Like a big set, pull on stems. The mall got the bomb, run out and tell the friend, drop the gem on. It's back in the house once again. Live the life, dad of diamonds and guns, and now gem full gaps. Like a big set, pull on stems. The mall got the bomb, run out and tell the friend, drop a gem on him. CBC's Greg Ross leads off our coverage from Oakland this morning from the thick of an elated crowd of Raptors fans. Just an incredible scene inside Oracle Arena. We're about 15 minutes after the final buzzer and the fans from Canada refuse to leave. They've been chanting. They've been singing, oh Canada. I, I will say this. I was blessed to be on a championship team in, in Houston. And it was the first championship, major ch sporting championship for the city pales in comparison to what this is. Only because, as Kyle Lowry, when I interviewed him yesterday, I said, do you understand the magnitude of what this means for the country? And then he really, like he said, put it in perspective. Like, we have the Lakers over here, the Kings in California. You have three teams, Golden State, just in the state of California. There's one team, the first major sporting championship in basketball is happening right now, possibly. And they're doing it against the dynasty of what the modern era is in the NBA. This is an unbelievable experience to be part of. It almost makes me want to go to game five and be part of it because I want to see how it ends.
and recognize that you're the Golden State Warriors. You've got one last hope. Mike, not only will he start, but according to Steve Kerr, Kevin Durant will not have any minutes restrictions whatsoever. He is anticipating, however, that there could be some early fatigue. This is a man that has not played since May 8th. Kevin had a, it's it's an Achilles injury. I don't know uh, the extent of it. He'll have an MRI tomorrow. We're going to talk about the end of the game because this is going to be a finals game. The Raptors had a chance to win a championship. They were up by six points, three minutes to go, and they lost. So, Mac, take us through, <laughs> right, with the entire country <laughs> ready <laughs> to celebrate. We were out in Jurassic Park. What do you think went wrong for them? Well, uh, I start with um, the timeout. You can't call timeout right there. You get a Gold State Warriors a chance to go to the huddle with a championship pedigree Mm -hmm. They regroup. I, I guess he was saying Kawhi Leonard needed a break. Decided to give those guys a rest. But in, in that instance, when you're on that such a run, you have the momentum in the game. You give the ball to somebody else and you let Kawhi Leonard take that play in a, off. In a game that, that momentum is such an incredibly important yes. part, it really yes. does seem as though it was a moment, that, obviously not purposely, but it does completely change the way the outcome goes. So, Jalen, as I'm going to lose you in a few minutes, uh, let's now talk about game six. We have to somehow manage to put all of this drama behind us. You and everybody else got to fly out to the Bay Area and they get one more game in Oracle. How will that game look different now that KD is down? The Toronto Raptors, I already put on the board, are going to lose by at least 10 points. Uh, because at the end of the day, I think sports is all about winning. We all uh, dream of a championship. Um, we all uh, think about that. This is a stage that I've always wanted in my life. So I know some people say, hey, um, uh, do you take a job because of money? Do you take a job because of uh, why, do you, why do you take a job? 
uh, guess what? Uh, this, uh, some way, somehow, this was meant to be, and, I, and, and I'm here, and I'm going to try and help this organization to get uh, to where we are. Uh, it's going to take patience. It's going to take will. Uh, we're going to instill uh, passion, a passion to win. Guys, the overall goal in the NBA is to win a championship. That has to be the overall goal. It's not playoffs. It's not. It's to win a championship at the end. Toronto, Canada. You are not dreaming. This is for real. How do you want load management? Let me tell you something. If everything that went down over the last 24 years led us to this moment tonight, then let's not change a thing. Get up if you've never fallen down. Everything we went through together was turning us into something. We could live like legends. You gotta understand that every lesson we learned was turning us into something. It was turning us into something phenomenal. We chose what we were looking for. Make good choices and great things will happen. We could live like legends. It was destiny. It was written. We are more than who they think we are. We are more than the stereotypes they place on us. We are a movement. Stand up. Stand up. Tonight, Stand up. the revolution will be televised. We came this far to come this far. And one win further. Close your eyes and imagine how it'll feel to hear this. A celebration underway here in Toronto. The Raptors are NBA champions. Now hold up, hold up, hold up. Bring that back one time. Eyes wide open this time. The Raptors are NBA champions. This is for you, for us, for those who came and for those who remain. So let's get some. And let's get that trophy tonight. Legends never die. Thinking back on how I came up and since the thinking this was your nigga Just one of those days with the pain Now a nigga praised every city with the stage Only 23 but I make sense cause I got Jordan weight Goldie likes I gotta eat even if it's not my plate Mama see the God in me and that's everything that it take Hey, got no time to waste I'm trying to find a way I'm delayed Keep my generation straight without delay It was written pimping ain't my decision It's just my instinct uh, Use a pencil control your mental one thing for instinct uh, First you light the sour push the throttle to the infinite The road gonna get tits a bit but it ain't no good if it ain't no risk Now every day we celebrate One step closer to the gate Told me the toaster was my favorite I just showed them that I'm great I just showed them as I take over the weights over Like pressures on the scale told her 
got channel love to control me, I'm gone. All that glitter ain't gold, my niggas know. All you need to grow is all the fire stored in your soul. The road you chose reflect where you gon' go. If it's looking cold, spark up the fire inside your soul. All that glitter ain't gold, my niggas know. All you need to grow is all the fire stored in your soul. The road you chose reflect where you gon' go. If it's looking cold, spark up the fire inside your soul. on the perimeter. Don't settle for a contested shot. Throughout this crowd. So many Raptor fans making the journey here to the East Bay. Siakam with the bucket. He's got 26. All joining Green, Iguodala, Curry, and Livingston. Into the backcourt. Kawhi Leonard with it. Kawhi gets it across on the pass to Danny Green. Green now sends it to Siakam. thrown to Draymond, nearly out of bounds. Curry lets it fly, doesn't go. Loose ball. It's Kawhi Leonard tracking it down, diving for it. Oh! They don't have a timeout left. A timeout. Well, they don't have a timeout. Timeout. Technical foul on Golden State. They do not have a timeout remaining. Kawhi Leonard. Six to seven from the foul line. Two possession game. 114, 110. Curry lets it fly. Canada, the NBA title is yours. The Toronto Raptors are the 2019 NBA champions. You think they use a lot of champagne in these celebrations? Take a look at this floor. Serge, Serge. Yes, sir. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling like a champ, baby. I'm a champ now, man. I'm really excited right now. Here he goes with the, the champagne. <laughs> Gotta watch it happen. The six and six. Kyle Lowry with the ring. Kawhi Leonard bringing a chip to the city. I want my chips with the dip. That's all I know. I don't want my chips playing. I want my chips with the dip. <laughs> What's with the plant, man? Where'd you get that? It's a housewoman gift for Kawhi. Oh, I see. He's staying. <laughs> Does he know this yet? I'm waiting for him. I'm waiting. Have you seen him? Words can't explain it, to be honest, but um, the feelings of just success, the adversity, the ups and downs, 
it's what you work for as a professional, as a man. Um, you just want to be at the top of your game when you need to be at the top of your game. And it, it all kind of works out at some point. And everything happens for a reason. Everything. It got you here. We got, we, <laughs> we got some trophies. <laughs>
and we're proud that we were able to do this because this is one of um, this is the origin of basketball uh, in the world, and the championship has come here. I was born in the baby down cat scan with my builder fell down on the rat scan. People sold the super one a trip to the P now. While I settle off the shores of the long now, my father's clean. I mean, my mind is clear when I transmit. I am the man of the family because the pants fit. I want to let forensics prove that I can mince groove with the thread from me to water. Hey, want to say salutation to the nation of the Nubians. We about to place it in that three feet of stew again. I got the frequency to shatter Mr. Jones' perm. I got a hail of other honeys because the short term valley and a score for the shoddy in the jacket. For the brother, he's the nigga when he packs it. So get your butt out the sling. I start my homie floating up. That means the best. So like the autograph, I'm signing to the.